My name is uh, John Michael Davis. I'm Lieutenant General of the United States Marine Corps. I'm the Deputy Commandant for uh, Marine Corps Aviation. It means we've been working this for quite some time. We've got, uh, it's VMFA-121 and uh, uh, when uh, achieving initial operating capability means we've got a fifth generation short takeoff vertical wing uh, uh, aircraft that can um, deploy in harm's way uh, and do our nation's bidding. So bottom line, it's, uh, it means we could deploy that airplane to combat if required. It means we've got not only the 10 airplanes, but we have the air crew and the maintainers trained to go operate that airplane. So very rigorous standards uh, by which we uh, looked at uh, clearing that airplane and uh, the, the squadron has achieved all of the criteria that we need uh, to an acceptable level to, uh, to, to, to uh, declare initial operating capability for the F-35B. This is VMFA-121, the Green Knights, located in uh, Marine Corps Air Station, uh, Yuma, Arizona, a yeah, part of Ma uh, MAG uh, Mariner Group uh, 13. It's a big step. We're the, the Marines lead the way. Uh, we're leading the way with the F-35. We're the first service uh, in, the, in the United States. We're the first service anywhere in the world to uh, have an a, a, a initially operation capable, capable F-35 uh, aircraft. So bottom line, it's a big deal for the Marine Corps. Uh, we're the nation's force in readiness, the, the first to fight. And uh, this is a fifth generation capability, which means there's no place in the world we can't go. There's no foe we can't go against. There's no weather we can't go through in order to get an F-35 to support our Marines at the pointy end of the spear. So this is, a, I think, a real game changer for us. Allows us to go do the job in any climb, any place, anywhere, anytime. And uh, that's what the nation demands from its core, and that's what this airplane's delivering for our Marines, from a sea base or a shore base. Our, our MAGDAFs are the world's finest fighting organizations the world's ever seen, and you know that, Marine. And uh, this airplane is going to make those MAGTAFs, those Marine Air Ground Task Forces, even more powerful, uh, more capable. If you look at how the V-22 has changed our Marine Expeditionary Units and our, our Marine Forces and Expeditionary Bases ashore, collapsing battle space, moving twice as fast as, as, as we ever have before. Over, you know, Now we're deploying the airplane across oceans. Um, so unmatched agility, adaptability, and combat capability. The F-35 is going to bring the same kind of step change, maybe even more, to our Marine Air Ground Task Forces that the MB-22 did. I'm immensely proud that our Corps is in the leading edge, that we're bringing an airplane that has fifth generation capability, but also has the basing flexibility to put it close to our Marines. On our Marine Expeditionary Units or any place ashore where I've got about 3,000 foot of flat service, I can, I can, I can launch an F-35 and, and park that airplane, employ that airplane close to my Marines at the point of the spear, and cut down on the, the cycle time that I need to get them the support they need, the transit time to the objective area, and basically more combat power for our, our young Marines. And that's exactly what this airplane is all about. One, it's, uh, it's the newest attack air platform we have in the United States Marine Corps. We're going to transition our F-18s, our AV-8Bs, and our EA-6Bs to the F-35. Uh, we're going to procure about 353 F-35Bs and 67 F-35Cs. Um, and that we're going to do so over the next couple decades. It's a tremendous warfighting capability. Um, it's going to ch bring tremendous change in a good way to our, to our, to our Marine Corps and our, and our Marine Air Ground Task Forces. And again, you think about the unknown battle that looms in our nation's bow, this airplane uh, with Marines painted on the side, it's going to allow your Corps, our Corps, to go anywhere, uh, anytime against any foe and, uh, and, and carry the day. And, and protect our Marines in the manner they, they need to be protected in any threat. So regardless of the threat, this airplane will be there supporting our Marines. That's, that's exceptional. Yes, well, I'll tell you, so we are initially operating, initial operating capability now um, with a, what they call a two Bravo software load. Um, which gives us the initial operating capability package of capabilities that we signed up to a number of years ago. Um, we will achieve, we'll achieve full operational capability when we have the 3F software load, which should be in the fourth quarter of uh, fiscal year 17, 2017, which gives us a lot more avionics capability, gives us external weapons carriage capability, so I can take this airplane and turn it in from a really stealthy, uh, uh, hard to see, uh, stealth, stealth strike fighter to a bomb truck. Can carry 3,000 pounds more ordnance than a fully loaded F-18. 
um, gun pack, um, all kinds of good gear, all kinds of good weapons on there. So much more capability than we have today. That's our full operational capability. But that's not the, the end of the development of this airplane. That's just the next step. We go into a Block 4 airplane where we get all kinds of cool weapons and, and more capabilities for this airplane. So lots of room and, and planned growth in this airplane. Um, but the full operational capability should come in the fourth quarter of 2017. We should be transitioned out of the AV-8B Harriers by 2026 and out of the F-18s by 2030. So we'll be an all F-35 fleet in 2030, so 15 years from today, all right? Or from declaring IOC with VMFA 121, we should be a full up uh, F-35 force, unless Congress uh, sees fit to buy us airplanes at a, at a greater rate. And we could, be, we could be out of the F-18 and be all F-35 by 2027 if we were that lucky and they could buy us more airplanes um, in, about, uh, in about 12 years' time. Where, well, first off, I think probably the most important one, like all, this is just a machine. The most important thing we'll do is the Marines that maintain it, and the Marines that fly it, and the, and the Marines that are supported by it. So we are focused very much in building a very high quality uh, maintenance force, maintenance Marines, enlisted Marines, the best, best, give them the best training, the best tools, and, uh, and build them up and encourage them to stay Marine, stay working on that airplane. And you'll, you'll, I expect you'll see a lot uh, with General Dumford's initiatives with leader to lead, it goes right into the maintenance department in, in uh, F-35 or any kind of squadron we have to, to retain those really high quality leaders that are also highly skilled technicians. So keeping those folks, keeping them around and, and building from VMFA-121 to VMFA-211 to VMFA-122 to VMFA-311, building on that core competency of maintenance Marines. That's the foundational piece for the sustainment for that airplane. And then the, the flyers, the aviators were transitioning pilots from F-30 from F-18s, from AV-8s, EA-6B Prowlers into the F-35 now. And this year, we'll take our first uh, young uh, officers right out of the training command to go into the uh, right into the F-35. So that's that's big deal for us. Uh, working the the sustainment piece really hard. So um, our mission capable rates for our legacy platforms are, you know, we design them for about 70 to 75 percent mission capable rate. When we, uh, that's where we, our target is for the F-35 as well, uh, but maybe even trying to get a better number than that. You know, how do we get better readiness out of this airplane? How do we make sure we got the right maintainers, we have the right spares uh, posture for this airplane, and make sure that we get, extract maximum capability out of the jet. I think that's the key for us. And it's not just buying parts, but it's high, high state of training, high state of professionalism for the enlisted force. Make sure we keep those Marines in and make, give them the opportunities to, to lead and advance inside a maintenance department of an F-35 unit. Uh, same thing with the young aviators. I think that in combination with the spares posture um, will get better, uh, extract maximum value and get the best range we can out of this, this great warfighting machine. The coolest thing about this F-35 is it's got marine span on the side. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, uh, first, like all Marines, we take our lead from the Commandant. So General Dumford is very engaged personally with uh, F-35. Uh, all things F-35, all things marine aviation, it's the A in the MAGTAF. Uh, so he takes that very seriously. So I, I stay in close communications with him to make sure that um, the airplane is, is doing what he wants the airplane to do, that it's delivering the capabilities he wants for our Corps. Uh, and that uh, when the comment on the Marine Corps says an airplane is initially operation capable, that it's initially operating capable and it can go uh, do our nation's bidding in any climb, any place against any foe. Um, so he takes that responsibility very seriously, as do I. And uh, we're blessed to have a commandant that uh, takes the aviation component as seriously as General Dumper does. Hoorah. <laughs>